riches and wisdom, and strength and honor and glory and blessing. You may be seated. As Christians, we have a desire, a desire to have a more meaningful relationship with Jesus. We want to be closer to our Lord tomorrow than we were today. How do we accomplish that? One way to accomplish that is to get to know the names of our Lord. You see, the names of Jesus, the names and titles of Jesus tell us a story. They tell us a story of hope, a story of salvation, and a story of love. Tonight, he shall be called the Passover Lamb. Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. For indeed, Christ, our Passover, our Passover was sacrificed for us. He was sacrificed for us. In the passage that Willie already read to you, Revelation 5, verse 12. Go back there and notice what, what John records. Worthy is the Lamb. He deserves the praise. He deserves the glory. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom. Jesus is our triumphal Passover lamb. As the Passover was nearing in that first year of the ministry of Jesus, John the Baptist in John chapter 1 verse 29, he declared that Jesus was the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Let's talk for just a moment about the Passover. In my personal life, I've only really known well one Jewish family. And they would often say, next year, Jerusalem. Now, what would they mean by that? They meant that next year they wanted to celebrate that feast in the city of Jerusalem. They primarily talked about two. The two that they wanted to be in Jerusalem for was the Passover and the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. Why was the Passover one of their favorites? Let's go back to the book of Exodus to find out why. Exodus chapter 12 tells us a story of the Passover. But let's back up to Exodus 11 first. Exodus 11, verse 4. Then Moses said, Thus says the Lord, about midnight I will go out in the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sits on the throne, even to the firstborn of the female servant, who's behind the hand mill, and all the firstborn of the animals, then there shall be a great cry, a, a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as was not like it before, nor shall it be like it again. But against none of the children of Israel shall a dog move its tongue against man or beast, that you may know, know what, Moses? Center here, verse number 7, that you may know that the Lord does make a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. 
See, the Passover, the Passover for Israel was to remind them that they were special, that they were selected, that they were chosen. Now, chapter 12, verse number 12. Now the blood, the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. They were put the blood on the doorpost, on the doorframe, the top. And when I see the blood, the blood of that sacrificial Passover lamb, when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you. For the nation of Israel, Passover made them special. They were special. They were God's chosen. And the issue was the presence of blood. Would the death angel see the presence of blood on their home, on their doorframe? If so, he would pass over. Well, guess who the chosen people are today? It's Christians. Those of us who have put our trust in Jesus, those of us who have obeyed him and become Christians, his blood, just like that blood on the doorpost, His blood protects us today. He is truly our Passover Lamb. We've already read 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7. The issue is the presence of the blood of the triumphal Passover Lamb. How do we get in contact with that blood? It's when we're baptized. When we are baptized, we come into contact with the blood of Jesus through our obedience to his word. And his blood cleanses us from all sins. You know, that's what we need in our life. That's what we need in our world. Because we have a sin problem. You know, what do we do? We have guilt. And we should have guilt because we have sin. And the blood of Jesus washes those sins away. And just like that death angel passed over, God looks at us. And those sins are no more because of His blood. In the book of Job... Chapter 19, notice what he says. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know, that in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another, how my heart yearns within me. John's message of revelation to the early church was a message of hope, like this message of John right here. He said, how my heart yearns within me. Revelation chapter 5, verse 2. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy? Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seal? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. That's depressing because no one was found worthy. But then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And I looked, and behold, what does he see? Does he see a mighty king standing there with flowing robes, with power and a scepter, sitting on a glorious 
crown? No. Here's what he sees. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, that Passover lamb, as though it had been slain. The lamb was the only one worthy. Our Passover lamb, that's the hope we have. Because Jesus is our Passover lamb. God's purposes were fulfilled by his blood. There had to be someone worthy enough to die for our sins. You know, the blood of bulls and goats could never take away sins. They would be forgotten for a year, but that was it. They come due again. It was only the precious blood of the only true, perfect, unblemished Passover lamb that made it all possible. 1 Peter chapter 1. Notice what Peter says. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct, Received by traditions from your fathers. But how were, you, how were you redeemed? But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He was the only perfect one ever. And the only one worthy to go to that cross and die for our sins and make a difference in our world. How did Paul describe this Passover lamb, this sacrifice? Romans chapter 1. Concerning his son, whose son? God's son. Jesus Christ. He's not just Jesus the Christ, the Messiah. He's our Lord, Adonai, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh. He was born according to the prophecy and declared. Declared to be what, Paul? To be the Son of God. But how? With power. With power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. What did Jesus do? He conquered death. He conquered death for us, for you and for me. Now, Romans 4, 25. But why did he do all that? Who was delivered up? Because of our offenses. Not anything he did wrong. He did no wrong. Oh sure, they made accusations. The Jewish leaders made several accusations. They threw mud on his wall, seeing what would stick. But nothing stuck to the wall, because he did no wrong. He was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised. Why? Because of our justification. He was raised so that we could be justified. What does justified mean? It means just if I had never sinned. Justified. Just as if I had never sinned. When I went down in that water way back in 1969, all those sins were forgiven. And now, as a Christian, when I do sin, I can go to him and ask for his forgiveness, and he will forgive. 1 John 1, verse 9. What is the message of the triumphal Passover lamb? Three. Three primary messages. A message of hope. That's what this world needs today. 
This world needs a Passover lamb because the world doesn't have a lot of hope. The world is going downhill pretty rapidly. Our culture, our society is going in a very bad way. We need hope. We need hope for a better life. We need hope for something better than this. And it's through the Passover lamb we have hope. But we also have victory. Because it's easy to look around. It's easy to conclude in our minds that the devil is winning. You know, just look on the news. Look at our schools. Look what's happening It's easy to think, well, the devil is winning. The devil may win a few isolated battles, but the Passover lamb gains the victory in the end. That's the message of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, so many times Jesus is pictured as that lamb, as that Passover lamb. Because John wanted to make sure that those early Christians, first and second century Christians, who first received that message, knew for sure that the victory was theirs. That the devil wasn't going to win. And he was going to lose big time. Third message. Do you have any problems? Yeah, problems. Family problems. Yes. Problems at work. Yes. Problems in our neighborhoods. Yes, problems maybe even in marriage. Yes, problems resisting temptation. Yes, whatever your problem might be. And we could go through a very long laundry list of problems that we all can face in today's world. Jesus is the answer to every one of those problems. If you want to have a better life, if you want to make a difference in your family, if you want your marriage to be better, if you want to improve your family life, make the Passover lamb first priority in your world. In life, life will get better. You know, everyone who came to Jesus was impacted by him. And only one person that we know that came to Jesus with an honest heart looking to improve, only one person ever went away sorrowful. Why did he go away sorrowful? Because he didn't want to give up his riches. He didn't want to bring Jesus as Lord in his life because his riches was Lord in his life. But everyone else who came to Jesus with an open heart and wanting to make their life better, their life was better because of Jesus. Jesus makes a difference for all of us. So tonight... It's really a simple question. Will you obey that lion of Judah that Paul described? Will you obey the Lamb of God that John described? Will you obey the triumphal Passover Lamb that Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians chapter 5? Will you put your faith and trust in Him for a better life? A life that will make a difference 
that perhaps through your example, you will influence others to make that decision. And more people will become part of his family, the family of the Passover lamb. Tonight, once again, it's not complicated. God didn't make it complicated. He didn't require things that would be difficult to do. He made it easy. It takes faith. Will you believe? It takes repentance. It takes confessing Jesus as the Son of God. And it takes baptism. Where we come in contact with the blood of the Passover Lamb. As a Christian... It's a wonderful thing to know that we can seek forgiveness. When we do things wrong, when we don't live up to our name, Christian, when people can't see Jesus in our hearts and in our lives, we need to seek forgiveness. 1 John 1, 9. Perhaps you need the church praying with you. James 5, 16. We have a song to encourage you. Will you make that stand for the Passover lamb? Will you stand with the one who makes all of this possible? Will you please come as we stand and sing for your encouragement?